Welcome to the Lacrosse Show with Connor Wilson and Mark Powers. Welcome to episode three of the Lacrosse Show. I'm Connor Wilson. Back with me for episode three is Mark Powers. Excited to have him back. Good to be back. He's out on the road a little bit reporting, interviewing some people. This week we're, we've got a great show lined up, a bunch of interesting topics. We're going to dive right in. First one up, under-19s. They've been going on in Turku, Finland. Uh, the U.S. did actually end up repeating after dropping two games to Canada and the Iroquois uh, in group play, which I think a lot of people were actually excited to see as, as pro-American as they may be. True. I think people were excited to see a little bit of parity come into the games. Seeing the Iroquois uh, beat the United States was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, not only for their national identity, but you know, for the lacrosse program, uh, especially with their younger kids. True. Great to see uh, Canada come along in, in pool play. They really, you know, stepped things up. I mean, they they looked like a really quality field team. Yeah. But overall, you know, you've seen eleven. You see eleven, twelve teams now with under nineteen programs. You know, the, the competition is getting better. It's not like the Definitely. U.S. kids are the only kids out there who look like legitimate field lacrosse players anymore. Yeah. And that's an exciting thing to, to see. I mean, some of the kids who playing for Finland, they had a defenseman who was, who was really quite good I should also that tape. Yeah, he looked good. He looked yeah, good. He's not bad. Ball so, carrier. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So some of the other kids out there, you know, around the world are really starting to step up. That's exciting to see. Um, you know, rocking the... the that's a pretty lame imitation of an Iroquois ponytail. raid. He's riding a ponytail. It's a ponytail. <laughs> uh, trying to, you know, a little respect for the Iroquois. Great showing. And hopefully that they can come back in the future. What do you think is more important, you know, men's team, you know, national team growth or under-19 growth? Is, is there one that's more important? Well, I, I think first and foremost, I, th- I think we could both agree, and, and we were talking before we came on, that, you know, the game, as far as growing the game and, and really seeing it take hold, that's obviously going to happen with the youth. And there's no question that having, I don't necessarily think that it has to be an under-19 team. You know, uh, obviously that's an easy manifestation or a symbol of a country's youth program growing because that's sure. the only youth, international youth competition that I'm aware of. Um, you know, maybe there's another, but... Certainly the biggest. Right, definitely the biggest. And I also think that at that age, that's a good barometer, you know, because you're seeing the U.S. team is primarily composed of college freshmen and or older high school high school players. And, you know, at that age, you, you can certainly tell pretty well, you know, where that country stacks up. Yeah. And um, I, I think the youth is certainly where, where it needs to grow, but, you know, we were talking about um, teams that have come around and made men's national programs, like... Like the Philippines team, uh, shout out to uh, uh, Josh Josh Akut, Josh Akut. and also uh, Andre Rosales out of New York City. Shout out to to him. He was down in Austin at their uh, their practice, and we got we got Israel. So you know, having national teams grow is certainly good. I don't think we're going to sit here and say either is necessarily uh, bad for the game, but um, I think if we had our druthers, under nineteen growth would, would certainly be the uh, the ticket. Yeah, I'd definitely like to see it, and I think that under-19 growth will result in, in men's national team growth, not only numerically, not only more countries playing, but also more quality. You know, when, sure. you, when you get See the Czech Denver, Republic. Look yeah. at the Czech team. You know, when we were both, Connor and I were both in uh, in Prague for the Alice Robeski tournament, and actually uh, some of the players that we played against on the local host Radisson team, which I think we could both agree was definitely the best Czech team that, that we yeah, saw over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and they, they have a couple of players headed by uh, Dominic Peshek, um, who were on their under-19 team, and they were actually practicing for that while we were there. And yeah, I think they they really acquitted themselves really well at this tournament. I think they finished fourth or fifth, something like that. Something like that. They definitely yeah. moved up. They, they surprised some people. They have some real talent, and and you know, they've made an investment in their youth program through the box yeah. game. True, but at very the same true. time, that does spill over to the field game. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Canada has seen quite a bit of success. There's no reason that the Czech Republic can't sort of jump up. In the terms of uh, of world lacrosse, right? Excellent. Right. Soon, I think quickly yeah. they'll quickly. do it. Um, who who did you like from the tournament? You you obviously had a chance to watch a lot of the games, got to see all the U.S. games. So why don't you tell me? Why don't you tell me one guy that really impressed you from the U.S. team, mm-hmm. and then one guy that you saw from some of the other teams? Sure. I mean, uh, Stephen Puntrell was excellent for the United Mid- States. Uh, he was playing midfielder for the most part, I, I, I believe. I mean, it's hard to tell almost at right. this point. And, but his, his goals were big. Mm-hmm. Uh, they came when they were needed. Um, he, he dodged hard with you know 
with aggression. I mean, he really went to the cage. Yeah. It was exciting to see. Obviously, Kavanaugh was excellent. Sure. Uh, and, and, you know, Kadelka and, and a bunch of defensive players, Segler, were great. Yeah. Uh, both of the goalies for the U.S. Oliveri had, had a great game. Mm. Uh, at certain parts, and Turi played fan, sure. out of his mind. Uh, Did you like the way that they rotated them? Yeah, or I think that that's something different. Yeah. You, know, you got two quality keepers, they're both young right. kids. Let them play. Find a starter, uh, find a finisher. Yeah, you know, you, 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 can, you can twist that up and right. you can go with one for one game. Whatever the case may be. The point is, you got two kids on the team. I was right. glad to see right them he left them playing. And righty left. That's yeah. Uh, as far as for other teams, I, I was impressed by a number of players on the Iroquois. Uh, yeah. Stick skills beyond their years. Mm -hmm. Thinking, you know, this is an under-19 player. Right. really doesn't look like it. A couple kids for Canada. I mean, they yeah. were stacked. Offensively, they had some great talent. Right. Um, what about what about a player? What what about a guy that you know is going somewhere to play next year? Like so, a guy that comes to mind for me is like uh, Joe French on the Canadian team, or I saw that uh, Randy Stats for the Iroquois yeah. put up a lot of points. I don't know where he's going to school, but he's a name that's kind of familiar to kind of familiar to me. Are, are there any guys that we should be on the lookout for? Well, I, I think Randy Stats. I should bring him up as a great point because he's a fantastic player, and you're going to see him in the NLL and in the MLL someday. Right. I, I don't know what his plan is for next year, but he is that caliber of player already. I also thought it was really cool to see Johnny Palace play in the sure. 19 games because he just finished his first NLL pro season. Only pro, I'm sure, probably He playing, was the right? only pro, right. uh, and that that was really cool. I and mean, how did he do? He did well, but it was He's funny. A uh, he was, they had him playing midfield, even though I feel like maybe he's more of a natural attacker, but right. uh, the Iroquois moved a bunch of guys to the field. It, it was good. Uh, you know, they had a very balanced offensive team, uh, played great team ball. It was yeah. a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. It was fantastic lacrosse. Uh, so we're going to transition now, and then we've got kind of through those young guys. Now, a now lot of them. <laughs> some of the older guys still in the game, talking yeah. a little MLL. We're going to keep this short and sweet because there's still three weeks left. You can still have Chesapeake, you know, they're kind of the top dog mm -hmm. record-wise. Denver's right there, Boston, Long Island, Rochester. Yeah. Only only one team is out right now, right? Hamilton is the only eliminated team or uh, Ohio, are the expansion? Ohio, Ohio, Ohio too. too. Uh, I believe okay. Charlotte and Hamilton Sorry, also guys. really needed to win last weekend in order to even have any shot. Right. Uh, they were three and seven. In order to go five hundred, they would have had to win their last gotcha. four games. Gotcha. A loss kinda of kills them. So yeah. you really have it down to those five teams. Who is your pick for top dog right now? Who who kinda of looks the best for you? Who looks the best? Um, just based off of the yeah, past. Maybe a different question from who is the best. Yeah. Who looks Who looks the best right now? Well, other than Chesapeake, who I think we both agree is kind of in a class to themselves right now, at least in this um, MLL season. They, Similarly, they, record wise. Record wise, and I think that they've beaten the top teams. I mean, they've beaten the teams that they're supposed to, but also the top teams. Um, for me, I'm actually going to go away from uh, my kind of Homer New York pick, even though right. I think the Lizards are looking awesome. They, they look great against Hamilton. I'm taking the Denver Outlaws. Uh, I think Denver they look amazing really. right now. Big pickup um, with Anthony Kelly at the face off X. I mean, that's a huge. They, they were not getting murdered, but they were not. Close to it. Yeah. Close to it. They, they needed some help. <laughs> You're right. Big pickup for them. But what I think is awesome for Denver is they have impact players at every position. Mm -hmm. So. You know, whereas Boston, to me, is obviously much more driven by Paul Rabel and other teams have yeah, players they, that kind of define kind their of identity. Yeah, and die by his success. I mean, he has a bad night shooting, yeah. and he takes a lot of shots, and the Cannons lose. No, no question. No question. And, you know, to an extent, Mundorf is that kind of player for Denver, but, uh, you know, watching his game, he really impressed me this week because he's not the type of guy who always has to have the ball in his stick. I mean, no question, he's a dodger from the attack, and that's, that's rare to see. But his riding game is also something you, you certainly have to talk about. Yeah, he's a heads up passer. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, he, he dodges player. from GLE uh, from X, and he has no qualms about dishing the ball off. And to that end, I think that actually for me, Chris Bocklet Oops. has been a player, a rookie, but the way he fits with that attack and the way he played this week, him and Jordan McBride, they're going to be filling in that up. I think Denver's looking good, and their defense, Jesse Schwartzman, Lee Zink, you know, they're a couple. Uh, Steve Holmes, you know, a guy who. I mean, geez, I can't believe I'm even talking about him in the segment. Steve Holmes is, you know, really playing well and a guy you haven't heard of in a couple of years, but a yeah. guy that's having a, a quality season. Right. Who, uh, who do you, you like? Denver. I would go with Rochester, which is a bizarre pick. You know, they, they've really only been back in Rochester right now this, their second year. They are struggling a little bit. With championship team, though. Uh, yeah, Formerly championship team. Former, former championship team, but I, I just think that they're starting to come together defensively. Mm -hmm. uh, really kind of showing me some interesting packages. Athletic guys, Manly, Joe White. Guys, yeah, they're athletic. Uh, I think that Galway does a good job of leading them when he's on. Stopper. And he's a stopper and, and, you know, creates transition. Offensively, I think they're diverse and they can come at you a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. 
they weren't doing that at the beginning of the season, and, and I wasn't really sure about that, but they've kind of picked it up a little bit. Yeah. So I, I kind of like the Rochester Rattlers to, if, if not win it, at, at least make a run and, and really make it to the championship. I see them sneaking like in with the four. They could yeah, sneak in yeah, with the four. Yeah, I think seed. they could sneak in with the four, but I, you know they're going to have to string some wind together right. even to do that. But at the same time, I think that they can make that final push. I think they've, they've got the pieces and, and they may be yeah, they do. surprised people. Uh, 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 uh.